Um, this is kind of how uh, formalized dollars today exist on this. Actually, uh, we, we came up with another paper I'm not going to talk about hardly at all today, but it basically calls for a, a venture capital contraction somewhere on the order of uh, a 50% contraction in the amount of venture capital dollars available. And one of the main reasons is because the, the cost to start companies today has gone down so much. So private equity and mezzanine financing for larger companies will always be needed to help those companies grow. But when you're talking about startups at the very beginning stage, that game is changing a lot underneath our feet and it's becoming so accessible that it's really worth appreciating if you're trying to start a company today. So, so the good news about this, there are so many companies being started. It's becoming so easy. If you want to start a company, you can. It is like in reach of anyone to do. Um, the fact that you can access the global market from anywhere in the world that has a, a, even a moderately developed infrastructure is amazing. There are billion, hundred billion, trillion dollar markets that are available to a, two guys in a garage somewhere working right now. The bad news is, in that same category of companies, it's so easy, anybody can do it. And so it's, uh, it's creating, I, I love this picture right here because I have this conversation all the time. My team's pretty weak, but all my friends who are any good already started their own companies. And you actually see this, I, I have this conversation with people all the time, I say, I've got a great idea, I just need some software developers to go and start the company. And every time I talk to a software developer, they're already running their own company. And so I think it's one of these things where the skills that are being taught in school today, the, the technical skills even, are gonna become even more and more valuable in the future as that amount of expertise is, uh, is kind of augmented with some entrepreneurial skills and attitudes. It's, it's really laying the groundwork. It's, it's so fun, I've been here uh, just for a few days and this is my second time here. And I have a lot of conversations here about how you, uh, how you foster a, a slightly um, larger appetite for risk in youth and things like that. And I can tell you, everybody here has a huge appetite for risk if they've eaten durian because this is a highly risky <laughs> kind of thing to ingest, and so I think you just gotta get the right sort of risk kind of attitude um, uh, embedded, but it's, it's one of those things that's going to happen here. I mean, there are so many, so many of the things that are already in place to make it happen. It's, it's gonna be about figuring out how to kind of leverage it and, uh, and really help it scale. So I'm not gonna talk about the middle category, but the end category of this is uh, these kind of companies here, and this is a hard message for a lot of people to palate actually, but these companies that take a long time, biotech, clean tech companies, the companies that are going to definitely come out of the Biopolis, for example, here someday, um, almost everywhere else in the world, and I, I don't know, we'll see what happens, they're gonna lose a lot of money on companies like that. I think the existing kind of early stage financing mechanisms for companies that have a 20 year payoff to, to liquidity or profitability, um, they're gonna be really, really hurt in a lot of places. And the fact that there has been so much wealth created here and so much investment in fueling that is, is gonna um, put, put Singapore, I think, as a country on very uneven ground when it comes to figuring out how to actually monetize those companies because there's gonna be assets here that exist that don't exist anywhere else. So I think it's, uh, we're actually struggling with it in the US right now a lot, how you get these companies that everybody wants to see successful how do you actually get them to survive when the IPO window is not open, when it's really hard to borrow a billion dollars to take one drug to market, and you get to watch it happen here every day, but it takes, um, it takes a little more patience, I think, than some of the other things that, have, that, have, that, uh, that happen so quickly here, so. Um, this chart, I only want to make one point about it, but I gotta give a little preface, which is to say, um, this is how kind of the world looks at most companies now from startup at that beginning point right there to how they grow. So there are basically three kinds of companies and then lots of hybrids in between. But there are product companies that usually need to raise a lot of money or at least some amount of money and they wanna make a widget and they wanna make it a million times and sell it all over the place. There are service companies that can only grow as fast as they can hire people, so the Ernst & Youngs of the world. And then there are this kind of rare breed of company that they get started all the time, but very few of them scale, which they don't cost much money and they can grow really fast. And I think it is a, a natural inclination for everybody who talks about entrepreneurship and companies and startups and venture capitalists to really wanna latch onto this part of the graph right here and say, oh, how do we get companies that are on that fast up ramp? How do we get them that have turned that corner? And I think uh, it actually misses a huge point of, of what it takes to build an entrepreneurial economy. And that's all the rest of this, which is everything that happens leading up to that point. And everything that it takes to get 
the good ideas to rise to the top and push the bad ideas aside and how you go through and do that process intelligently. You know, we run a lot of programs that are just before company creation at the Kauffman Foundation. And um, we have partnerships with, I don't know, hundreds of organizations all over the world. And we ran a, we ran a, we're running a program right now, some of them may or may not be here even, where we picked five students who we thought were really, really promising and had to pick another place in the world to send them for this part of the process before company creation. And they're actually in Singapore right now at NTU, uh, working at the uh, NTC Center here. And the reason is because there are very few people who are thinking as clearly about the things that lead up to starting a company and the decisions you make that are gonna really impact how your company grows in the future than they are at NTU right now. And so it's an example of something that's amazing that is going on here right now, but that more broadly, as you start to walk back in time, the reason it's hard is because everybody has an idea for a company and very few of them are able to go and do what these guys have done and really turn them into massive companies. But there is a process by which you can get smarter about that, by which you can decide which ideas to, to put aside and how to kind of reinvent yourself and take the next step. And what we know about, uh, in the US economy, I can say what we know is that um, about a third of our GDP growth every year, for forever, for, for the last 100 years, has come from only the 1,000 fastest growing firms in the US economy. And it's actually a little less than that, we think. But uh, so, although 600,000 companies get started every year in the US, and that's a pretty flat number, the 1,000 fastest growing, a tiny, tiny fragment of a percentage, basically account for all the economic growth. And so what we're spending a lot of time thinking about now, and, and I think you get to kind of see it happening in a place like this, is what does it take to identify those companies? It's not just about starting more companies and, and creating more entrepreneurs. I think the idea of creating more and bigger success is, is something that people really miss and um, you hear, actually, you hear more conversation about it here and at MIT and at Stanford than anywhere else in the world. And so I think that is, that, that is something where it is really worth spending time. And if you're an entrepreneur who's out there thinking about starting a company, I would encourage you to think about, think about scale and think about scale from the beginning because the decisions you make before you've ever even started the company are really going to dictate and control how big of a company you can be. And it's, a, it, it's actually... It's actually much harder to reinvent a company, I think, than it is to start one on the right path from the beginning. And so it's, uh, it's something that's really worth, I think, taking to heart, I guess. Um, I'm gonna kind of just bang down this list a little bit and say, I mentioned it a lot. I think there's so much unique stuff going on in Singapore right now. And it's, I think it's easy to forget when you live here or when you're starting a company here, how one, unique it is, how to what an unfair advantage has been created for entrepreneurs here. And so it's so much of the, the foundational work has been done. Uh, I think everybody finds themselves in a really big hurry to say, okay, we built all this. Where are all the entrepreneurs? We, get, we gotta get companies going here. And it's going to happen here. It is just going to happen. It, it's, uh, it's, it's something that is, it is in some ways facilitatable but not forcible. And, and I think as you, as you start to get more entrepreneurship education in the, I mean, I, I talked to a principal from a school yesterday who's developing an entrepreneurship curriculum for an elementary school. That is, that is something that's happening very few places in the world for the reason that most places could never even think about how they would fit that in. And it is happening here, but, but it is, it's, uh, it's not gonna be quite as immediate as, as some other things that have happened here. And so I think a little bit of patience is gonna go a long way, but, but more importantly than that, I think uh, a real belief that uh, from the people who are here who are making it happen every day, that you're doing all the right things. You just need to do the more, you need to help more people, you need to be in a role of making it accessible and available. Is, uh, it's a really amazing thing to watch here.